good evening. Thank you for joining us. This is the Town Hall Get to Know. I hope that you're doing well this evening. We've got a great guest. I am so excited to introduce you to China Smith, well, China Dragon Smith. He is a local hero here in Sarasota, Florida. Uh, he was born and raised right here in Florida, as I understand. And he is a two-time WBA boxing champion, world champion. He's a, such a super dynamic gentleman. I met him a couple years ago. I got the opportunity at a local um, show that was going on. It was called Taste of Sarasota, but he was there. He was, um, excuse me here, I'm just going to shuffle a couple papers. Um, he was there. He was the, one of the hosts, and I was just like, wow, nice to meet you, China. And so I, I got to meet him. He didn't really know me at that time, but I met him recently down at Age Vital. Some of you may know Dr. Jenny. She has a wellness center right down on Main Street. Well, China happened to be there. As a matter of fact, I put that video on one of our shows because we were all there. There was a bunch of us. We were doing our IV drips and getting healthy. And at that point, I said, hey, China, would you be on my Get to Know broadcast? And he said, yes. And so we have him here with this evening. Let me tell you a little bit about him. Um, you know, he was raised in humble circumstances right here in Sarasota, but he had, his, he had a dream, oh, yes, to be that champion boxer. And so he, he turned professional at age 18 years old, and he went on to establish an outstanding professional boxing uh, record as a heavyweight. He posted 35 wins, five losses, and scored a very impressive 26 knockouts. Wouldn't want to meet him in a dark alley and have a man, right? No, he's a nice guy. <laughs> he really is. Uh, he gained international attention, though, and he took about six and a half years off. And then he decided to come back winning that North American World Boxing Federation recognition two times. And uh, he is with us here this evening. I'm going to bring him in in just a minute. I want you to know about him. He is such a nice guy. He is a great person. And by the way, he is making a positive impact in the community. And that's what this show is all about. People who, make, who are making a positive impact in their communities. That's why I have these folks on the show so that I can introduce them to you, hopefully inspire you to maybe take action, to volunteer to a local uh, nonprofit foundation and, and be a bigger part of your community. So China, he works hard and had gained hometown and national as well as international recognition for his accomplishments. His humanitarian efforts have been acknowledged and rewarded. Uh, and he's been one of the few people who have actually received the key to Sarasota. How awesome is that? That's really cool. So he's proud to say that he was blessed at this young age of 22 when he, he got that key to the Sarasota. He's become a role model, though, for other people. And he's considered a local hero, like I said. China is a strong leader. And he listens to the advice of others. And he's always willing to learn something new. He works with uh, local uh, groups here in town. His focus is helping young people so that they don't go down the wrong path. China Smith has never done drugs, never done alcohol, and he is a role model for our youth. And so that's why I'm having him on here tonight. I'm welcoming him. Let's bring China Smith into the studio. Ooh. Ooh How China you doing? Thank you. How you doing, Stephen? Thank you so much for the introduction. Thank you so, for, so much for having me on. I had a little difficulty uh, at first, but... I tell people, tell kids, never stop trying. Never stop trying. That's what the name of this show is. Never stop trying. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, again, like I'm just going to make it simple. Why should we never stop trying, China? I mean, a lot of people like to give up. You know, well, they get frustrated and they want to give up. What would you tell them? I tell people a couple of things. You don't have to be great to start at something. But you do have to start to be great. I repeat it myself. You don't have to. You don't have to be great to start at something. But you do have to be. You have to. You have to start to be great. Okay. Um, once you put in your mind to never give up, you're going to meet obstacles. You're going to meet challenges. That's part of the, that's 
that's part of the process. But if you're willing to work hard, um, surround yourself with good, positive people, your chance of working hard towards your goals, small goals as well as big goals, and you will eventually get to your your goal. As I say, keep trying, keep striving to be better, to get better. That's that's good advice. You know, I know for myself, um, you know, I felt those times where it's like, you know, I've just had about enough. Like this is all I can take, and and I give up. But I tell you what, I've learned, China, is is that if we give up, that might be about five minutes or even thirty seconds or maybe a day or a week. But we give up right before the breakthrough is about to happen, and that's what the dis that that's a disappointing thing. Because we'll never achieve our dreams if we don't keep on trying, right? Absolutely. And they say much is given, much is required. So everybody is at, at different levels, um, part of their life. Like you said, it's very true. You don't know at that last moment. Now you've been to you've been to hell. You've been to the toughest point, the toughest time of struggle in your life. And right before. Your breakthrough is right around the corner. If you can hold on for another 30 seconds, one more hour, one more day, it's there. Everything you work for, everything you struggle for, everything you lost, you're about to gain it and then some. But you give up right before the breakthrough. And it's hard because a lot of people have given up to, too soon, have given up and quit and walked away. And once you put that in your, once you plant that seed, as a young person or an old older person, it's hard. It's hard to get back, and those haunt you for a long time. You know, you 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 know, you may be successful, or striving to be successful, but you remember that time that man, I gave up. I shouldn't have gave up. I I should have, could have just held on just a little longer. That's, yeah. A lot of people. Well, that's the important thing that you're talking about there, because then that's I think making people think, oh. I'm such a failure. And then they might fall into going that, well, I'm really just a loser. And, and I know for myself, I felt like that a lot, but in fact, you're not a loser because you tried, right? That's, that's the important factor. Is as that, long, go ahead. sorry, as long as you're striving to be better, I don't care if you fail 99 times, all it takes is one time to be successful. So as long as you keep getting up, as long as you keep polishing yourself up, so what you feel? I, like you're right. A lot of times we are we as people are afraid to fail, and a lot of us are, are afraid uh, we won't try something new or or try that new job, try that new position, uh, try this new task because because of failure. Well, failure is part of the process. Mm -hmm. The only time that you're a loser, I don't like to use that word loser. Every time you are a failure, remember back up. You're gonna fail at life. You're gonna fail at things. But as long as you don't quit and you keep striving, you're not a failure. The time, the moment that you quit and give up, that's when that's when you can say that you're a failure at that. I've heard people refer to like fail as first attempt in learning. Uh, fail, you know, we can fail, but that's part of the process. And that that uh, what I had to learn for myself was is that when I failed, those were the opportunities if I allowed myself to look at that situation, learn from it, and, and then become better. And though for a long time, I didn't learn from my mistakes. And I kept on doing the same thing over and over and over. Nothing changed. They call it insanity, doing the same thing over and over, right, China? So, yes. You know, it's, it's really an opportunity to change something and maybe have that success. I'd like to... I'd like you to tell the viewers about yourself. Maybe you, you'll uh, tell a story so they can get to know you better. You you were a young professional boxer, but you grew up right here in Sarasota. And and so many people in this town are so proud of you. And worldwide, you're, you're, you're well known. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your childhood and how that that went for you? Um, thank you. I'm, growing, I'm born in Sarasota, Florida, 941-2236 Mango Avenue across the tracks. Uh, my family to this day, we own the oldest black business in Sarasota, which is a new town called Town Hall. It's a restaurant and lounge. I went to Riverview High School. Growing up, I knew and believed that I was going to do big things. I wanted to play professional football or become a professional boxer. And 
I, I was blessed to have played in um, you know, sports. They helped keep me out of trouble. They keep me on a positive, positive, positive track. I, um, my dad was very strict on me. My dad was a major part of my life, and I just try to always surround myself with good, good coaches, good people. And I, and I looked at the, I looked at them for leadership, and um, so my childhood was very, was very blessed. Uh, I, like I said, I hung around good people. And then the people that that I learned from too might have done bad things or or not so well. I learned mm-hmm. from them, and I'm and I'm and I'm glad I got a chance to see that at an early age to help me not to judge, but say no, I don't want to be a part of that. And so when so, at times when my friends or people would go to the left and do negative things or things that could could get them into trouble, I had to make the decision and say no, I'm gonna go to the right and um maintain focus and be who be who I need to be and be what I want to be. So was that your father that kind of instilled that? No, I they have a do they still have a local restaurant here in town as well? Yes, it's off uh, uh, Martin Luther King and um Martin, Martin Luther King and Purchase, yes. It's still it's still there. And so he instilled the work ethic in you, didn't he? From a from a very early age, you know, I tell people I didn't know about the law. I just knew that if I got into trouble and you told someone you was going to tell my dad that was enough to keep me in line to get me keep me in check, and because of that work ethic, it helped instill in me. I don't know. I, I say I don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing, but I don't know how to give up. I don't know how to quit. So because I was, uh, he instilled instilled in me at the early age. As when I meet obstacles, I meet challenges, I take it head on. And once my mind's made up that I want something, I'm willing to pay the ultimate price to go go get it. Well, clearly you, you did that. Now, um, I know that your first fight here in Sarasota, and I think I really remember hearing about I that. I don't know if it was the first fight. Well, maybe not the first fight, China, but one of your fights you had here at the local arena, uh, Robards Arena, and it was one of your early ones, and there was 1,500 people turned away from the door. They couldn't even get in. It was like, wow. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and it was it was a very humble experience because I had some people uh coming up, you know, growing up in my area. And they would say, Champ, if you ever fight home, I will come see you fight, even even if I had to walk there. And it touched me because I'm like, man, I I I never knew that I inspired so many people of all walks of life, of different walks of life. Mm-hmm. And so when he found that I was fighting home, he said, Champ. You're fighting home and I will be there. So I remember like it was yesterday. God God bless the rest of so my grandmother. It took me about 30 minutes to get from the ring to to see my grandmother that was in a wheelchair about 30 yards away from me to give her a hug because so many people, I don't want to get emotional, so many people was congratulating me and hugging me and embracing and showing the love. And I was just like, listen. This is for us. We did it nine for one. I couldn't have never. I could never have done it without you, without your love, without your support. So I'm truly humble and very appreciative of, of the support that I have and that I had and I'm having now. Well, you you're doing a uh, a lot still. Um, you might not be in that ring. Uh, maybe you can tell us you have a nonprofit, a 501c3 nonprofit right here in town, Team China Smith also a production company. Maybe you can tell the viewers about that and what you're doing these days. Well, um, I have Team China Smith. But I'm not, me personally, not a 5-1-C-3, but I'm affiliated with the uh, Manatee Police Athletic League where I have my boxing fitness gym up in Bradenton. Mm-hmm. It allows me to use boxing as my platform, dealing with kids or, or young adults, people dealing with anti-bullying, dealing with um, less, uh, lack of confidence, the boxing has helped me instill in young young people, people in general, that stand up for what you believe in. Work on building your confidence up. Uh, if you are a bully, you don't have to, you know, just because you think you're tough, does not necessarily give you that right to pick on other people. So while I'm able to teach kids and people to love each other, to respect each other, doesn't matter what background you come from, doesn't matter your religion, doesn't matter anything. It's just that that's a human being, that's a person just like me, and I need to I need to respect him or her and show love and show appreciation. And 
so then I have my promotion company. I have my security team. Um, so I, I have a lot going on, a, a lot of good things. But my main, like, main focus is being able to touch kids, touch people, and help direct them in a positive direction. Because when I found out that a lot of people are looking for something positive to be attached to, and some people are lost, and they just need to know that someone out there cares for them. There's groups, and a lot of groups, a lot of organizations that are out there to help people that maybe come from broken homes, may come from um, different, all different things. And there's different organizations as myself to help these help people like myself to, to be in a comfort zone or be secure knowing that there's other people out there to help them. Well, people like yourself are there and, and it's so, so beautiful. I mean, I'm just honored really to be able to get to know you uh, better, China. I know that we got a chance to kind of just chat a little bit down there at Dr. Jenny's at AIDS Vital. That was really cool. Uh, you're just doing a lot for the community and that's what attracted me to you. Uh, other than just already knowing that you're just a generally a really nice guy. Um, and so tell the viewers about... How, Clearly, you get a lot of satisfaction from helping these young kids, and you speak to the, like the kids at the school and stuff like this, correct? Yeah, I speak to kids. Um, again, it's kids, but I speak to young adults and adults too. But I look at it. Someone told me I heard this thing, statement. I didn't come up with it. I just use kids make up twenty five percent of the population, but they're hundred. They they are hundred percent the future. Yes. They are. And how you instill in that kid, this one positive word might change that kid's life. Might spark them say, hey, all I needed was a little, little encouragement. All I needed was, needed was someone else to believe in me. And direct that kid, hey, go to school. Listen to your parents. Listen to the law. Listen to adults. Um, just stop using profanity or stop um, doing drugs or stop being disrespectful, you know, and showing them, talking to them firm, but showing love. And again, encourage them and lead them by example. It helps. You, you Like they say, you might can't save everyone, but if you're able to inspire one or two kids or one or two people, and then they, and they're able to inspire one or two people, now we're doing something. And like I talked to kids, I talked to people about racism or discrimination. We wouldn't, kids, people are not born, born um, disliking someone, they're taught right. that. So since you're since there's someone teaching them that, they can be untaught, and 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 we have the ability and and have the ability, and we should take pride and take control of teaching our kids, teaching people people about responsibility, about love, and showing love, and teaching love, and leading by example. That I think that you hit the nail on the head there, and that's what I had to do for myself because and, and i gotta just say i am so proud of you you not you didn't go down the road of doing drugs and alcohol so what that tells me is is that you're a person that was always very confident within yourself you you know everybody i might have doubts but you kept on pushing and that's what we're talking about tonight is never giving up you just kept on going but you didn't go down that path of drugs and alcohol like so many have uh, including myself and and I had to come back from that and then recognize you know and and the de de decide for myself that I wanted to be a role model and that's where it really makes the difference because I think we can talk to our kids and to young adults but talk doesn't necessarily change the way that they're going to do things does it China I uh, no, it doesn't you know um I tell people no one's born perfect so let's let's just be real you know, um, and, and, and not just because I didn't, as I told you, no, I did not drink, no, I did not smoke. But that does not make me better than you, better than anyone. You know, so here again, when I'm talking with the kids or talking with people, man, all I, I'm just here to encourage, to say that, um, that if you fall down, when you fall down, because we all have fallen down, just get up. Pick yourself up and don't be afraid to start over. And and let's even like when you watch and see what's going on into the, in the world today, with all this rioting and and, and and racism and discrimination, it's terrible. Someone as we need to stand up and say, listen, if I've done something to you, and 
upsetting you, offending you, rather knowing and not knowing. But once you have brought it to my attention, I apologize. I'm not afraid to admit that I'm wrong or I don't know everything. And so by saying that and, and, and showing my humbleness, um, I think it comes off strong because I know who I am. I know that I'm a warrior. I don't need to, you can look at my record and say that I'm a fighter by nature. So the, the point that I prove about um, walking and showing love and being respectful and, and teaching that, I think it comes off stronger and I know who I am. And so I, so my energy or people around me, I, I try to strive all so they can feel that. And it's so, again, it's okay to love my black, my black brothers, my white brothers. It's okay to love whoever. I love people and I inspire people and I want to continue to inspire people. And all I want to do is tell them my story, share a story, um, you know, just being able to uplift people. And like I said, to put your differences aside, come together as one and show love. That's it. I, 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 and I know that's why I love you too, because you know, it is about love. I agree with you a hundred percent. I believe that we are love. I believe that we, like you mentioned, we're born as love. And then we learn these other habits uh, to be prejudicial or judgmental about other people and, and being non-judgmental and, and allowing other people to be able to have their own opinion, even though we might not agree with it, that's real peace and serenity and acceptance. And I think that's love instead of just trying to bark back at them or I'm right, you're wrong. And, and that, there's so much of this I'm right, you're wrong going on in our society right now. That's why we need people like you, China, out there helping people recognize that, you know what, life is short, but you know what, we need to take today and, and make a positive impact uh, by being a, a good role model and an example for others that they could emulate us. What would you say, I'm hearing this a lot lately, and I know that we all have it. We all have superpowers, right, China? So I want to know uh, what is your superpower? Uh, I don't. Oh, good question. I, <laughs> <The knockout laughs> punch. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm different. Not. Not bad. I'm just different. I again. Um, knowing that I have the ability to forgive, and 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 knowing that even sometimes when I'm, I, I've been in pain, I've been hurt, that I can walk away from certain situations. Knowing my strength. Knowing that I tell people, please don't get it twisted. I am a killer. I'm, I could be very violent, but I choose not to be. The fact that I have the choice that I have legalized license to kill in the ring, and I say that again in the ring because of my profession of my boxing. But I choose to show love. I choose to help people. I choose to use my hand to build, not to destroy, not to tear down. And and I'm a man of principle. I stand for what I believe in, and willing to die what I believe in and that's and, and once a person realizes that there's hey there's greatness in all of us there is greatness in all of us sometimes we have to look deep within and go real deep but if you realize that that there's no more there's no one that much different than you because if we all was cut we all bleed the same we all believe we all bleed red right so and, and you could you could pull you can um, just like you pull negative you could pull good good vibe and good energy around people that you hang around. So my thing is to try to continue to change myself to be better, change other people that surround me for the good. I see goodness in people, not necessarily the bad. Now there, there is a lot of bad people and bad things going around. Mm -hmm. you know, there's no question about that. Sure. But over overall, I I, I stand strong to stand to believe in what I believe in and to overpower um, that, hey, me and my team, me and my people are going to do what's right. Yes. Yes, that's that's really that great, great advice, I think. Um, I just want to let the viewers know, we really appreciate you that you're taking time. We want you, if you're watching on Facebook or you're watching on YouTube, to share this video out. Uh, China is is really, truly a hero. Uh, not only here in Sarasota, but really all over the world. He's a hero. He's my hero. I, I love him. He, you know, I want to be more like him because he just really goes out of his way to help people. 
and to make them feel good about themselves. And, you know, I'm just blessed that he's here with us. Be better. So be, uh, yeah, be better, right? Yeah, be better. And I, don't give up, right? I appreciate what you're saying. And I thank you. When I realized that I'm a man and I come from dirt, I said, wow, there's not much to dirt. There's black dirt, there's white dirt, there's red dirt, there's all type of dirt. Mm -hmm. Now, I tell people that I learn from myself. Now, the spirit that's in me makes me different. Not better, just different. And so I've been blessed. I see things from a different perspective. And again, they say judge not as you should be judged first. Because I'm not perfect, who am I to judge anyone? Who am, who am I to tell you that you can't be great when there's greatness that is born inside of you? Who am I to tell you that you can't be a doctor? You can't be a lawyer. You can't be an uh, a athlete or whatever you want to be. You can be whatever you put your heart to, put your mind to, willing to work and willing to sacrifice to go get it. Now, would it be easy? No. It's not going to be easy. Because as you're trying to do good and striving to do good, there are going to be a lot of people to pull you down. There will be a lot of people tell you that, man, they can't, you can't do it. You'll never do it. Most of the time, the reason they tell you that is because they have failed in their life and they wasn't able to do it. I tell people how you feel about me, what you think about me has nothing to do with me. And that's not a, 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 a cocky thing. That's just a bold statement. That's just the truth. That yeah. way I don't get caught up with people's feelings. Yeah. I love you people. I love my people. I'm trying to Smith, AKA the people's champ, but that keeps me focused on to, or doing my mission. Well, that, that, that I love the way you said that China. Uh, you said in the past what you love most about uh, when somebody says it can't be done. Uh, what are you working on right now, which might fall into that category that can't be done, but you're going to do it anyways? Well, one of the things that before I say what I'm working on now, because I'm always working on something, is when I was off for six and a half years in boxing, and I said I'm going to make a comeback, and everyone was, uh, a lot of people was telling me that's impossible. There's no way you can do that. And I said, that may, that may be true for you guys. But who would I believe in all things are possible? And so, again, once, my, once for me, once I'm, my mind's made up and I'm willing to, to go get and make that sacrifice. And so I'm working on uh, expanding my, my promotion company, expanding uh, my organization with the kids, with the youth. Uh, I got a, a couple of books out. Working more on the speaking toward inspiring. I love inspiring people. I love telling people to help, to help change their uh, perspective of uh, ones that have been down and feel like, man, I, I'm a quitter, I'm a loser because I felt that this, I felt that that. I too have felt that a lot of things. So, uh, a lot of things I'm not good at. The things that I'm good at, I'm good at. But I'm not afraid to admit that I need help. And that's why we are, we as people need each other. We need each other. We need people for whatever. And I and I learned that whether you're a CEO, it's amazing. I'm, I'm jumping now, excuse me. It's amazing with the pandemic. And you look at all the celebrities, all the musicians, the movie star that makes millions and millions a year, a day, however, that the, the pharmacies, the nurses, the doctors, the, uh, the grocery store, those people became very important, very, very vital because of we needed water, we needed, we needed toilet paper, we needed the, the hand sanitizer. Right. So uh, keep stay humble, keep be true to yourself, be true to yourself and true to the people that's around you, and know that everybody's not going to accept you. Know that everybody um, misery loves company. I'm sorry, is that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. But you, as an individual, to change your outcome. You have the ability the power to change who you want to be, who you're striving to be. Just keep at it. That's it. Never give up. Never give up. The book. You mentioned that you've written books. And, and you know, I, get, I just got to tell you, viewers, you've got to get this book and you got to get this book for your kids. Tell us about your book, The Way of the Dragon, China. Tell us about this book. Well, here's a perfect example. Thank you. The Way of the Dragon came out. Um, I was going to New York. I was going to speak uh, to some of my friends' school. And I had a lady that was helping me write a book, a couple books. And I actually was, was going to do like a small film about my life. And, and when things kept happening. Things kept procrastinating and taking time. And I can't stand that, right? So 
I'm like, hey, God forbid she she passed. This was a couple of years ago. But I gave my word. I told the people that I was going to have my book and do a speaking engagement, right? So so I didn't know. Um, I'd never written written a book. So I'm, I'm praying. I'm upset. What I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it. I have less than a few months to get the book, get a book, get something, and go to New York and speak in front of these kids. But then something in my mind said, I gave you all ability. It's in you. So what do you, what do you what are you talking about? So I asked a couple of my friends, I said, hey, I'm gonna write some stuff down. Can you help me put a book? And one thing started leading to another. And what it taught me was if you make the first step, the second step, you might have to step a mile, but eventually help is gonna come. And so one of my friends said, Hey, there's a preacher or pastor that write they're they're written a couple of books to help people write a book. And I'm like, I need to meet him like now. And so we started and we went from, I was like, well, if I just had a cup of paper, I just need two or three pieces, a paragraph or something. I'm going to take some in my hand. And then he was telling me, well, how many pages do I need for a book? And he told me, I said, cool. And then um, he was teaching me and it was um, leading. So now I, got, I went from having the book, now I need the publisher. Well, he knew a publisher. And so I was able to get the publisher and then I was able to complete my first book. And I was like, wow. So again, you can do you can do whatever you need to do, especially now you have Google. So you can Google almost anything. But hmm. be willing to fail, be willing to be have disappointments, be willing for all that. Be willing for people to talk about you, be willing to to, to have your downfall, but never give up. Never give up because you never give your chance yourself the chance, the opportunity to see what if I put what if I what if I go all the way? What if somebody believes in me? What if somebody picks up my book and I'm able to change and inspire somebody's life? What if, what, what if? And that, that happens. So never give up. What if questions, you know, what if <laughs> you were to pick up that book? All right. What if you were to pick up the book, The Way of the Dragon, China? How could that make a positive impact in somebody's life? What? Thank you. It breaks it breaks it down. I keep it simple because I wasn't a, not a big reader, and it just tells you certain chapters of your life. You know, everybody's talking about man. I don't. You know, uh, I have all these problems. I have financial issues. I have relationship issues. I have this. I don't. I don't have this. I don't have that. But what you do have, if you woke up this morning, you're doing better than a lot of people that didn't wake up. So be grateful for what you do have. The first thing you have life. You might not be where you want to be, but thank goodness you're not where you used to be. And then if you put the if you put the pen or you put the work ethic behind it, you can strive and make progress to be anything you want to be. And that's just the book tells you to keep it simple, make big goals as well as small goals. So you really want to make big goals, but really want to make small goals so you can start striving towards towards those goals and see your progress. So it sounds like it's a it's it's a bit of a manual to 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 set some intentions, and then start taking action towards those intent intentions so that you can manifest your dreams and your goals. Yes, yeah. that's all. Yeah, it's just it's just it's just a, a platform to get you started. To get once you read the book, you'll see that man, this really helped me make a difference. It really helped me manifest my dreams and my my admiration what I what I've been striving for. Is this a, a guideline to give me some encouragement? Well, I think everybody has dreams and goals. Uh, I know that I had a lot of dreams and goals, uh, but for a long time, I just didn't feel like I was capable of achieving them. And so I didn't have any, uh, I guess, faith in myself uh, to be able to achieve that. And so maybe you can talk about faith and how your faith has pulled you through and uh, brought you to the successes that you've enjoyed in your life. <laughs> My faith. They say faith, with, faith without works is dead, right? Um, pretty much everything I got, when people, people said I couldn't get it, it was my faith. I believe in myself. You know, there's many days, many times I woke up and like, man, am I ever going to get there? I said, yes, I will, because I woke up. And so um, when, when the first time I fought for the uh, 
the National Boxing Association title, the NBA title. And we said uh, all the fighters was picking up the belt. They was taking pictures with it. And some of the, uh, the, the managers, the people, the, um, the newspapers asked me, do I want to hold the belt, take a picture with it? I said, no. They said, why? They asked me, why not? I said, because it's my belt. I'm taking it home with me so I can do whatever I want with it. That wasn't cocky. That was being confident. That was being able to have the ability and the belief and the faith to call things and not as they were, or they should be, or as they will be. So I claimed victory before victory was ever set. I claimed it in my mind. I pictured it. I visioned it. I spoke it into existence. I manifested it. Plus, I put the work behind it with it. I worked my butt off for that. So, again, work your butt off. Believe in yourself. Believe in your dream. Believe in the process. Trust. Embrace that you're going to have ups and downs. Embrace that there's going to be a lot of tears, a lot of pain and agony. But all that comes with the territory. All that comes with the process. Well, you said earlier, so, you said earlier that it's it's not easy. And I know this too. To achieve your dreams and goals is not the easy street. It's actually the one that takes all the work, right? If it was if it was easy, everyone would be able to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just how it is. Beat for some reason, you know, but no. The 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 path to righteousness is a narrow path. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, having faith. Well, one of the things I know that for myself, I just had to, because because I want to talk to the people that are maybe like me, but maybe not like me, but people that are having these doubts about themselves. I can't do this. I don't have the abilities. Or I'm not smart enough or, you know, whatever excuse. And that's the way I like to refer to them as whatever mm -hmm. excuse that we're using we're holding ourselves back we just got to let go of this stuff and say you know what and i think you said it we are love we are good we all have these seeds of greatness that we can nurture and achieve great things absolutely well <clears throat> like you just said if you're walking around and saying telling yourself man i could never get a breakthrough i'm not good i i stink at this or or good luck is never in my on my happening to me or for me everywhere i go is just bad luck everywhere it's just it's just it's never good for me what do you expect to happen it's another thing it's like you can walk into a room with full of people 100 say 100 people in there and the first three people you walk into and they have a bad attitude they're like wow and so those first three people you say man this place is terrible. This place is filled with negative energy. Was it negative energy or just those three people had bad attitude? But if you start claiming this fact, hey, today is a good day. You know what? I woke up sore. I woke up a little tired, but I woke up. Now, let me see. I'm going to call the things. I'm going to call productive. I'm going to call positivity in my life. Today is a great day because I didn't have to wake up. And today, I'm going to look for this job. I'm gonna pick myself up. I'm gonna go to school. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna run a jog a couple hundred yards just to start something. I'm gonna do a couple sit up, a couple I'm gonna do a little, I'm gonna do a little, just a little bit to get going, to get my blood flowing, to inspire myself. And I'm gonna do this for the next 20 days. I'm gonna do do this for the next 30 days. To self-motivate yourself. Stop talking to yourself or seeing yourself as something negative. See yourself as something positive. Here's the thing. Whether you believe it, what whether you believe it right now, not lie to yourself, but tell yourself, motivate yourself, hype your own self up. Man, I'm great. How do you feel? I tell kids a few. How do you feel? I feel like a champ. I am a champ. Yes. You don't have to like me. You don't even have to know me. But that's what I am. I am a champion. Love it. I'm a boxing champion, but I'm a champion of life. Why? Because I love life. Why? Because I'm inspired. Why? Because I say these things. And you too can say these things. So, when a person said, man, I had a bad day. Well, did you have a bad day or did you have a bad five minutes? Or did you have a bad Did you have a bad hour? There's 24 hours in the day. Stop saying, giving them more power. No, I had a bad, bad five minutes, 30 minutes, uh, hour, worst hour in my life. But it wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't a bad day. It was a short period of time 
that you have to deal with. Deal with it. Move on. Let it go. And keep going. That's how you change. You change things from within. Everybody's looking without, outside. I need to find this. I need to find that. No. Find the power from within. Come from within comes greatness. He that is in me is greater than he is of this world. They say. Mm -hmm. Believe in believe in trusting yourself. Trust in the process. I was going to ask you how you felt that your uh, boxing career um, helped you define routines because uh, I think that routines play a big part in your life. Would that be true? Oh, absolutely. You know, the same routine over and over, you know, where, you know, as far as the workout routine, certain things had to be mandated where you had to do constantly, no matter how you feel. It's just that it's in your mindset that it's your, your job had to be done. And you didn't feel, you, you, you felt a certain way if it was. So keeping it, putting it in your mind, like, hey, I have to train, I have to eat, I have to rest. I have to do this. This is my job. This is my career. This is what I'm striving for. This is mandatory. There's no, there's no excuse. There's no, I can't. No, I will, and it shall be done. And that's what God tells us is, is that we can ask for anything and, and he will give it to us, but there's more to it than that. And I know that there is, and that's about having faith and having already forgiven yourself for the things that you've done wrong. And then believing that, in fact, it will come true because you have to be able to have faith. That's what I had to do. I had to turn my life over to the, the, my higher power, whom I call God, so that my life could become better and trust that it would and go through these difficult times. You're, you're such a great inspiration. Uh, I'm just so glad that you're with us this evening. We're going to just do this. We're going to take a quick break here. We're going to have a commercial break is what we're going to do. We're going to thank Total Coatings, uh, local Sarasota, Florida here, bathtub refinishing company. They do a great job with a porcelain glaze. It is safe. It's non-toxic. That's why I like them because it is safe and non-toxic, but they can take old bathtubs, make them like brand new. So we're going to go to a commercial. Let's go ahead and do that right now. We let our bathtub go too long. It had rust in it. It had deep pitting in it. There were chips. I quite frankly thought it was unrepairable. Total Coatings is a family owned and operated bathtub and shower refinishing company. We've been around since 2006, but we use a exclusive non-toxic porcelain coating that was developed over 60 years ago by a franchise in California. So the product is very well established. We refinish bathtubs, showers, wall tile, uh, countertops, and even sinks. Customers want to know what makes our product different, and that's, of course, the exclusive non-toxic porcelain. We also don't acid etch the surface, so you don't have to leave your home because of noxious fumes. I was completely and utterly shocked. It looked like a brand new bathtub. I would recommend total coatings to anybody. Okay, so if you need a bathtub refinished, you can give uh, Total Coatings a call. Sarasota, Manatee Counties. Um, we are here with China the Dragon Smith. I'm so pleased. And this is the Town Hall Get to Know broadcast. We do come to you every Monday at 7 p.m. We have people that are like China that are making a positive impact in their communities. And we really love to share their stories with you. We've been talking tonight about not giving up, about pushing through those difficult times, about getting a good healthy routine, about recognizing that you have these seeds of greatness within you, that you can develop them and achieve really truly anything that you want to. China, you were two-time um, World Boxing Association champion what are some of the other awards and belts that you won when you were in your boxing career? Uh, I was two-time National Boxing Association world champion, two-time National Boxing uh, Association Continental 
world champion. And then the last one was the North America World Boxing Federation title. And okay. th that last one was, I won some other trophies and belts titles when I was younger. The last one was because I was retired. I was off of boxing for six and a half years. Mm -hmm. And that's unheard of for a fighter, or for a person to be retired or doing other things and to make a comeback. And not just a comeback where you, you're having a fight, but a comeback on a big scale like that and to have the ability to win another title after six and a half year layoff. So they did they tell you that you couldn't do it? They say you can't do that. That's not going to happen, right? Yeah. Well, when I was telling people, because here's the thing: when I when I when I uh, retired the first time, I retired in um, I think 2006. I had a first round knockout, and so I stopped and I said, you know, I'll be I'll come back. Now I didn't realize that it was going to take six and a half years. So <laughs> when I was saying that, you know, a couple of years go by and people were like, oh man, well. When you're gonna fight again, I said soon, soon. So I never said that I wasn't gonna fight. I just said soon. So after three or four years go by, they see no signs or any training, any mo motivation to go toward that goal. People are like, man, you, you're crazy. They didn't want to say that to me directly, but they was thinking it, you know. And so after still saying the five years, five and a half years. Nothing, nothing transpired from that. They're like, man, this guy is, he's not too well. He's crazy. So when I did it, I said, okay, I'm ready. Let's make it happen. That's what I did. I made it happen. You awesome. did make it happen. That you are, that is awesome. Uh, just incredible. Um, like I say, you know, I'll say it again. I'm just honored that you're here with us, China. And, you know, I really appreciate everybody that's taking time to come and watch and listen to this. If you're doing the Facebook thing or the YouTube, make sure to share it out. Tell your friends. Come back to E360 TV. You can watch us on Roku. You can watch us on Amazon Fire, Apple and Android TV. Make sure to download that E360 TV app and watch this show if you just joined us. And watch it from the beginning because China has been sharing some really fantastic information with us. Now, you've got a book. Uh, you are uh, available to speak to uh, groups. How would people go ahead and reach you, uh, China? Uh, you can go to my website, uh, teamchinasmith.com. Of course, www.teamchinasmith.com. It gives you a little information about what I've what have I done, what I'm doing. And, of course, I'm on social media. I'm at uh, The Real China Smith, I, Instagram. Um, they hit me up. Time on Instagram lately, there, China. Not much, but I, you know, I, I pop in, pop in, and pop out. Yeah. But if, the social, the social media can get you, get you caught up in certain <laughs> things, you know, <laughs> and yeah. it it could be good for you, but it definitely be bad. So I, I again, I try to stay, stay positive, stay moving. Yeah, there's got to be a balance there because I know for myself years ago, I would spend uh, most of my time when I wasn't working my day job because I've been doing that for a very long time. But all that free time was consumed on social media and you start right here looking at this and you were going to look into that a little bit more and then three hours later you go, where'd the time go? Um, yeah. Yeah, there's got to be some balance, right? Um <laughs> So that we, you know, if we use that three hours instead of looking at all this other stuff that may or may not make an impact in our lives and watch things like well, town hall, get to know <laughs> where you can learn about how people are applying these skills like China has been talking to their life because it is about taking action. Isn't it China? Absolutely. Well, you, you, what I learned, the little that I learned is everybody's given the same 24 hours in the day. There's no, there's no less, there's no more. And so if you, if you know, most people sleep six, seven, eight, 12 hours a day, let's say eight hours, 10 hours a day, well, you're only given 12 or 14 or 16 more hours a day of time left. And then if you work in a nine to five or, or so, so basically what is what I'm saying is we have to use our time very wisely because I've been on social media and like you said, you know, you start to take a look at a friend or someone, and by the time you know you two, three hours, four hours went by. That time you could never get back. 
And if you're on the phone, your cell phone, or you're talking, watching television two or three hours a day, you didn't spend six, seven hours of nothing that you where you could be doing something to be productive. And it's not knocking anybody, it's just that I had something that I had to look at for myself. It's like, man, yeah. and time is very valuable. People say money yeah. is time. No, it's not. Because you can have you can have all the money in the world. You can never get your time back. Right. So and that's a good point because we cannot get time back. And that's where I say, you know, yesterday is a memory. And I'm like a lot of people. I love talking about the stories in the past and stuff. I do like reminiscing. Um, and then sometimes I like to project the future. But what I do have to realize is really we only have this moment. And that it's so important to make the most of this moment. And I was just talking with someone earlier today about how we need to make sure that today this moment this present moment and i believe it's called the present because it's a gift make the most of it and make sure that we tell everybody around us that we love and care about that we love and care about them and then do something for them make them feel good because we might not be here tomorrow i love how you said china you woke up and it's like great i'm a, i'm alive that's a great start it yeah. really is and you like you say, it's very true. <clears throat> we include myself, even though I know, even though I know it, we take tomorrow for granted. Like no one ever said that you're gonna be here tomorrow. We was on the promise this day, and to this day, tomorrow take care of yourself. So I say to people, including myself, man, I love you, man. I'm sorry, bro. Hey, listen, it was not that deep. Let's forgive. Let's let bygone be bygone and move on. The whole that host, the um, the anger and hostility for what? Man, hey, life is too short. Life is precious. Enjoy, embrace your family, your friends. If you ever talked to your brother or sister or friend in a long time because some issue that will ha that hasn't been worked out, man, squash that and make it make it right because tomorrow really is not promised, man. And with the pandemic and people dying left and right. Hold mm -hmm. on to you, the ones that you can hold on to, man, because this thing is serious. Right? It's real. It is real. It is real. And so we need to make sure that we take care of ourselves from a health and wellness standpoint, as well as our family and our friends and care about them and let them know that we're here for them. You know, that's what we've got coming up, by the way, on Wednesdays. We always have Ask Dr. Jenny. And that is a great show. It's an interactive show that you can join us at 7 p.m. Wednesdays. There again, download that E360 TV application. You can watch us on your smart TV on Roku, on Apple, Android, as well as Amazon Fire. Um, and we'll be talking this Wednesday. I've been working on trying to get healthier because it is all about healthy mind, body, and soul, I believe. And, and, and that's what you did for yourself is to take care of those things that has helped you be able to help others and you know, I, I just really appreciate all you are doing for the community right here, uh, China. Thank you so very much. Thank you. And uh, another shout out to Dr. Jennings, Age Vital. They're awesome. I use some of their product to um, help me. So check out Age Vital. She's, and Dr. Jennings does a lot of great things. And that's another thing. It's about teaming up with the people that are doing things in the community, things that want to help each other, help other people. It's, it's very powerful. The mind, like with boxing, boxing is 70% 70, 70 mental, 30% physical. The mind is a very powerful tool that we have. And what you believe in is what you achieve. If you believe in yourself, be willing to work, be, be, be willing to put, the, put time and energy in, associate, around, surround yourself with great people, positive people, people that, that, you, that are inspiring you, inspiring that, that, that you want to be like or be successful right there, not just in money or business, but just successful in life in general. That's 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 a really important factor. That's one of the reasons you're on this show, China. <laughs> I'm surrounding myself with people like yourself, and that we met, and that we met through Dr. Jenny. Yes, right? you know, yeah, so that's how that works. Not a great person. You know, it was it was pretty cool. There was a it was pretty cool that day, um, and yes. Folks, we care about your health. We care about your mental health, your your spiritual health, and your physical health. 
So we want you to get healthy. Do please join us on 7 o'clock uh, Wednesdays. Ask Dr. Jenny. Now, I've been doing a diet lately. I didn't know if you knew that or, or not, China. And so we're going to be doing, it's called Dr. Jenny's Biggest Loser. And so we're going to be doing an update on Wednesday. So That's join, awesome. Yeah. So join us for that because I put on some weight uh, over the last year or so because of my eating habits and the things that I was eating and not eating what I should and then falling asleep and not, you know, doing the right stuff. So I'm excited about that. Join us on Wednesdays for that. Do you have some closing thoughts here for us, China, that you can leave the viewers with uh, some inspiration, please? Again, um, <clears throat> we're going through some rough times right now. One thing, get out, make sure you get out and vote. Uh, it doesn't matter who you vote for. But I would tell people, before you vote, before you pick a side, before you pick a stand, please do your research. A great leader said, my people perish for lack of knowledge and understanding. Right now, it's not about trying to separate and divide our country, to divide the, the right and the racism and everything. It's time to, to come together as love, as one, as unity. Pull together. If you're able to, once you know, if, once you know better, it's time to do better. It's time to lead by example. Again, love your family, love your friends. If I've done something to you individually, I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm not perfect, but I do try to be better each and every day. So again, I love you, aka China Smith, aka the People's Champ. God bless and peace you, be upon China. you. Yeah. We Thank you so much you. for having me on your show. Thank You're you. You're very welcome. Thank you, China. We really appreciate you, and thank you everybody for taking time to join us. Stay healthy. Be well. Listen to some of this information and digest it, and take action, and never give up. Keep on going no matter what, because every failure was that opportunity to learn something new. Thank you. We'll see you again soon. Mondays at 7, Wednesdays at 7. Bye-bye.